Hey everyone, in this video I'll be doing day 21 of Advent of Code 2022 Monkey Math. I'll be doing explanations, going over my code, explaining my thought process, and all the libraries I used because I used Python and I used a couple libraries to make things faster. You'll notice that I solved today's puzzles um, pretty quickly. So part two in 13 minutes placed uh, 64th on the global leaderboard. And the reason I got that was because I used Python. So I'll explain that in a bit, but uh, if you want to see my code, it'll be down in the description. Be sure to check that out. And first of all, we're going to see a time lapse of me solving the puzzles. So here we go. So today, the monkeys are back. You were worried they're going to try to steal your stuff again, but it seems like they're just holding their ground and making various monkey noises at you. So apparently we're still traveling with the elephants. We have exited the volcano, and we can probably see that in the um, map over here. Yep, we're out of the volcano, safe and sound. And the numbers that the monkeys will yell. So some monkeys just yell out a regular integer. So for example, ZCZC is going to yell out uh, the number two, and DBPL is going to yell out the number five. Other monkeys do operations, so math operations on other monkeys' numbers to determine what number they should yell. So for example, the monkey root is going to yell the sum of PPPW and SJMN. Uh, these don't necessarily have to appear in order, so for example, root is going to yell the sum of these two monkeys' numbers, but those two numbers haven't been yelled yet, or those two monkeys haven't uh, had their turn yet, so the monkeys all wait for other monkeys to finish, their dependencies to finish, before they start. So our job is to simulate this and, <clears throat> and then figure out what, the number, uh, what number the monkey named root will yell. Okay, so I used Python today, um, so it made things a lot easier. I'll go through what I did in Python, some of the syntax, some of the libraries I used. They were all very helpful. So for parsing the input, this was you know the most uh, straightforward part, most basic part, I think. What we have to do is read in each line. Again, we're going to split it by new line characters. And then we can just extract each part by splitting it by spaces. Um, some of them are short, so if there's only two elements after we split by spaces, we know it's a regular number, and we can say that this monkey is going to yell this number. We're going to record that in this dictionary called lookup. Otherwise, um, it's going to yell multiple parts. Rather, it's going to um, yell the operation performed by two, two monkeys. Um, it might be plus, minus, subtract, sorry, plus, minus, multiply, divide, and we can also just add that to the lookup table over here, um, just inserting that whole list. So at the end, we're going to have a lookup dictionary that looks kind of like this. So it kind of looks like uh, this thing on the left over here. We have this dictionary containing monkey names as the key and uh, the number they're going to yell as the value. Sometimes this might be an integer. Sometimes it's going to be a list containing the operation. So after we have that in the dictionary, we're going to have this lookup or compute function that's going to actually compute what the numbers the monkeys are going to say recursively. First of all, if the monkey's name is already in this dictionary as an integer, then we can just return it because the monkey is just going to yell that integer. Otherwise, we actually have to look up um, the part so we can take their left part and their right part again um, otherwise if it's not an integer it's going to have three parts so we take the first part and the second part those are the names of the monkeys um, that our current monkey is going to look at to compute the answer uh, we're going to compute those monkeys numbers so again that's that recursion bit and then once we have those two numbers, for example, root is going to have PPPW and SJMN. Um, after computing those two numbers, we're going to actually evaluate it using the operation in the middle. This is my second time using eval in uh, Python. It's probably not a great practice, but it worked. And Eric didn't put any nasty code in here, so I'm, I'm grateful, I guess. And after we do that, we can just return the result. So root is actually going to literally evaluate PPPW plus SJMN. Um, like as a Python statement. We're going to cache our results using LRU cache from func tools. And this just makes it so that we don't have to uh, recompute uh, monkeys numbers once we have them already, since monkeys aren't going to change their numbers. So caching is always a useful trick when you have uh, inputs to a function that don't change. Since it saves us from having a giant recursive tree, this is more like dynamic programming. Okay, so that is it for part one. We get this huge number on the order of trillions. So if you're using uh, something other than Python or a language that can't handle arbitrarily large integers, um, I would recommend using longs because you'll need to store like 64-bit integers because they get kind of big. Okay, part two is a little bit more difficult. So what we're doing now is we realize that the monkey named H-U-M-N is actually us. 
So H-U-M-N presumably stands for human, um, but just with the values removed, sorry, the vowels removed. Um, and now the monkey named Roots is going to yell out the comparison between the two numbers on the left and right. So in my inputs, Root is going to yell out whether DDZT and RMTP are equal instead of adding them together. So this might as well be an equals equals. Um, and then the HUMN monkey, that's us. The value described in the input actually doesn't matter anymore. So we're just going to ignore this. And what we're asked to find is the number that we should yell out in order to make Root's comparison equal because Root is going to compare those two values on the left. Now, this is a bit more complicated because we have this sort of tree of influence that leads towards the roots comparison. And we don't exactly know how to like do it backwards to get the value of human that we should yell out. And again, the numbers are on the order of trillions. So we can't just check every single value that could be yelled out and see if roots um, check matches. So we're gonna have to be a bit smarter. Um, but actually in my case, I actually did it the, the dumb way. So there's this Python library called SymPy um, that does computer algebra. Basically what this means is it's symbolic manipulations. It does things exactly. It does sort of manipulation of numbers like square root of three times square root of three is three instead of dealing with floats. And it can deal with variables as well, which is the thing that's really going to help us here. So in our case, we're going to make this variable called human, which is just going to represent the number that we're going to yell out. And it's like an actual variable inside the SymPy library. So it doesn't get assigned a value. It's actually like a symbolic abstract variable that can be manipulated. I should actually demonstrate this here. So let's do a live demo. Um, let's import SymPy from SymPy import symbol. Um, we can call, make a variable called X. Uh, actually, it turns out it's symbols. So X is symbols uh, X. And now we have a variable called X and it looks like X. Um, it doesn't actually have a value assigned to it. So when we do two times X, it returns a SymPy object that's actually representing the value two times x. And if we do um, x plus two, that's going, actually going to be the number x plus two. So in this way, we can do sort of symbolic manipulation. If we do x plus two times x plus two, um, it doesn't actually value it to anything. It represents the expression x plus two squared. And these are all SymPy objects, um, but they get converted to strings when we print them out. So human is going to be our SymPy object that represents the variable human. And then we literally do the same thing um, in, that we did in part one. We compute everything. And eventually we're going to get in root um, a number on the left and a number on the right. And those two have to be equal. But those numbers aren't actually numbers because they depend on this variable human that we don't know yet. Um, one thing that to be careful here, I made a bug um, when I was writing this is to include parentheses on the left and the right because uh, we have some order of operations issues. If we have like x plus two divided by x plus two, it should be one um, or, or like undefined if x is negative two. Um, but it's a, it's a symbolic manipulation. So maybe a better example would be x plus two divided by two. Um, this should actually be x plus two all over two instead of x plus one um, when we're doing this operation. But if we don't use parentheses, that gets mixed, mixed up. So we should use parentheses here in the eval statement. Anyways, eventually we get SymPy objects that are expressions for left and right. And we can just print those out and we get a sort of linear equation in human. So you can see the left number, uh, let's look up roots, is going to be ddzt. ddzt is going to be this number, um, 1.7975 something um, times 10 to the something minus 25.935 times human, and then um, 77247 something something. So these two numbers should be equal, but human is a variable. So we have to solve this linear equation. And the way I solved it was just, you know, regular linear equation solving. Um, take this number, subtract this number, divide by negative 25.935. I didn't get an exact integer, um, but I did get something pretty close. So you can see up here, I did that computation um, and it returned like 39 something. I forgot to put a negative sign here, so that's why it's negative, but 3.952 something um, was the value I got for human. Okay, once we have that equation, we can actually just solve it directly over here. I use this thing called uh, solve linear inside SymPy, which allows us to solve any expression that has a SymPy object on the left and a SymPy object on the right, and it'll solve for every variable. In our case, human is actually going to resolve to an actual number, and we can just print out the result. It's going to actually be uh, in a tuple uh, called, I think, like the string human and then the number. And so we just extract the number itself and print out that to get the value that we should shout out. One other thing I did here was use uh, SymPy's parse expression function, which I looked up 
on Stack Overflow. It's kind of like eval, except it actually does things with SymPy objects. So it returns like an actual literal number or rather an actual SymPy expression. So something like four divided by three will not be 1.33 repeating with floating errors. It'll actually be four divided by three, the SymPy fraction. So parse expression um, is an alternative to eval. It's probably a bit safer because we're not doing any unrestricted Python syntax stuff. So if Eric inserted some malicious code in here, it wouldn't do anything. Okay, so that's it for part two of Advent of Code 2022, day 21. SymPy is incredibly OP. I think we use like three things from here. We use the basic symbol thing for manipulating the expressions and getting um, the two sides of root. We use the solve linear to actually solve that equation. We could do it manually, but this is uh, a little bit more automatic. And we also have this uh, parse expression thing, which just parses the expressions for us. Um, I probably should have listed that in a different order, but anyways, would recommend checking out SymPy. I'll leave the link in the description below uh, for the documentation to this computer algebra system. I hope this video was helpful and informative. If you want to check out my code, as a reminder, it'll be down in the description below in the GitHub repository, so be sure to check that out. If you have any comments um, or feedback or questions, feel free to leave it down below and I'll take a look. And that's it. So uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you tomorrow for day 22.